from family events to volunteer opportunities to community happenings, there is a lot going on in your community. Learn about all the possibilities and opportunities on this episode of Community Hotline. Hi, welcome to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel, and we're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. Tonight we have a full show, and starting it out, we're going to talk with ERCO. ERCO stands for the Immigrant, Immigrant and Refugee Community Organization. And representing ERCO, we have Connie Wintrung, uh, board member, and uh, Nyami Vang, from, uh, a community organizer from ERCO. Thanks for being here, both of you. So um, maybe, uh, Nami, you could start out by telling us a little bit about ERCO um, I know we're specifically going, going to talk about the Pan-Asian uh, Center there, but the ERCO itself, what, tell us what you do there, what the mission is, maybe a little bit of the history okay. if you could. Um, ERCO's mission is to help promote the integration of immigrants, refugees, and the community at large into um, a self-sufficient, healthy, and inclusive multi-ethnic society. That's a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot. So we, we do a lot of things. Yeah. Now, yeah. how many different... Uh, ethnic groups or communities do you represent there? Do you have any idea? Yes, <laughs> um, quite a bit. Um, just at the Asian Family Center we are, where we are at, there's over 20 different languages. Wow, we have just at the... <laughs> just, <yeah. laughs> wow, so at ERCO itself, there must be yeah. hundreds? We have, yeah, um, over probably, 100? I think about 80 languages. About 80, I think okay. 80 languages. Wow, because I know just even at um, Reynolds High School alone out here in East County, I've heard that they have around 70 some languages yeah. spoken, which to me would be overwhelming for people like the teachers and the administration at the school. But for people coming from another country here and, and you know, with that many languages spoken, there's not going to be very many people here that speak that language. Yeah, yeah. So probably being able to find somebody who speaks your own language, mm -hmm. understands your culture, uh, would be a huge reassurance, yes. I would think. Yes. So, so tell me, what are, what are some of the things that you do there? I know you have, um, we'll talk a little bit about yeah. the, the Pan-Asian community yeah. in a minute. but. So ERCO has five primary different locations. Mm -hmm. At ERCO's main location, we focus mostly on the newest arrivals, okay. refugees who are coming here, helping them with pre-employment training, English classes, and other support services. We also have um, Africa House, and that focuses mainly on the African immigrants. We have the Asian Family Center, where we are, um, focusing mostly on the Asian and Pacific Islander communities. Okay. Um, we also have a senior services program that we partner with the county on, Okay. Um, that's at a location in East Portland. And we have the International Language Bank, which directly speaks to what you were saying. We provide high quality translation for all these really difficult to find wow. um, languages. Yeah, because there's a lot of them. And yeah. There's more languages than I ever knew ever existed. <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing. So Connie, as a board member, what, what is your role in, uh, as a board member? You help make um, policy and, and decisions <laughs> regarding ERCO, is that? Is um, in terms of being, uh, a dedicated volunteer board member, mm -hmm. um, getting to help to provide like advisement and um, any information resources that we can in terms of the programs mm -hmm. that are being held at um, ERCO mm -hmm. and ERCO Asian Family Center specifically. Now um, you you have a background as a volunteer here, however, before even being a board member, is that right? Yes. So what what kinds of things did you do as a volunteer at ERCO? Um, as a volunteer, I got to, for example, there was the hepatitis B HIV prevention education project, oh. and there was a partnership between ERCO Asian Family Center with Multnomah um, Health uh, Department. And so they were really seeking for nurse immuniz immunizers or vac vaccinators. Yeah. <laughs> and so I became known as the super shot nurse. No. Uh, so, you're nurse. so you're a nurse? I am a nurse. Yes. Okay. So I was very honored that I got to be continue to be on the active uh, emailing list to be a volunteer. And so then I also coordinated and helped outreach um, to recruit more nurse volunteers from Good. Oregon Health and Science University School of Nursing. And so the program schools were really supportive of my reaching out. And so we actually Good. had it where there was more more than enough volunteers. And so that was something. That, that doesn't happen very often. Yes, and so really well, you exciting. You must be doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Great. one example. 
So, um, so I have kind of an idea of what of what ERCO does. Now, the, the Asian Center specifically, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about that. So the Asian Family Center was started in 1994 as a program of ERCO, and we began really focusing on Asian and Pacific Islanders, but our programming has really reached out to um, a lot more people. Our programs help the most vulnerable in our communities. Mm -hmm. We have energy assistance programs, oh. early childhood programs, youth academic programs, health programming, as Connie mentioned, and also community development programs. Wow, so it does touch on a lot. That's a lot, a lot of yeah. stuff to do. <laughs> um, so what specifically, as a community organizer, what does your job entail? So I work at a program called the Asian Pacific Islander Community Leadership Institute. Mm, okay. So it is uh, one of six funded grants through the Meyer Memorial Trust to build community leadership in all our ethnic um, communities. There's um, a Native American component, mm -hmm. there's a Latino, African, African immigrant, and Slavic. So our program in this past year has been working with um, community leaders in many different Asian Pacific Islander communities. We have um, Karen, Chinese, Taiwanese, um, Burmese, uh, Vietnamese, Vietnamese. Yeah. and don't forget yeah. <laughs> Japanese American. Um, just so, just a very wow. broad yes. range. Pulling yeah. them together, having leadership skills workshops, and um, having them focus their passion for their communities and helping to improve the outcomes through advocacy. It's interesting. All the different groups that you just mentioned. Do they work together? So normally, our communities, um, the ethnic communities, are very very active within their own communities. Right. And so this program has been great pulling those different communities together. Yeah, that's what I was wondering yeah. about because I don't think there's usually much opportunity yeah. for different Asian communities that's to come true. together yes. working with each other. Yes. And I wondered how yes. that works yeah. because very diverse cultures. Yes, very diverse. And uh, that must be have some real mm -hmm. challenges. Yeah. Okay. And so we're also a part of um, the Coalition of Communities of Color. So ERCO Asian Family Center is part of this wider coalition working with a lot of these other different groups. And those challenges, you know, language, culture, um, just in the way acculturation, how long people have been here in America. Mm -hmm. You know, some people have been here less than five years. They lived in a refugee camp for uh, 18 years. Oh, boy. And then we have... What a, um, what a, yeah. what a change, what an yeah. obstacle to overcome. Yeah. What are some of the greatest challenges that you've run into? And, and, and you too, Connie, as, a, as a, a volunteer, what are the, some of the greatest challenges that you find other immigrants and refugees yeah. encounter coming to our area here? There is like an overwhelming need, I think, when people come without um, their language skills and knowing where to turn, because there are a lot of resources that people offer, but as a newcomer, they don't know where to go. Of course, And so yeah. the Asian Family Center, ERCO, we really are kind of this one-stop place. People can just come for questions. Well, I was gonna say, it's, it's a great resource center, yes. right? So even if you perhaps don't end up providing them with exactly what they need, you can probably refer them yeah. to where they need to go. Yeah. Or so, help. Or mm -hmm. help, yeah, or, or get the help that they need because there's a lot of great agencies and organizations yeah. and, and community um, groups that are, are there to help. A lot of groups come over here um, with churches, do they not? Is, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and how, but how do other people get over here? They have family members here that you know, bring them over, and, but people come over here without anybody mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. That's gotta be overwhelming. Yeah. So they, if they, how do they find out about ERCO? Um, for the most recent uh, arrivals, the mm -hmm. refugees, if they have refugee status, then ERCO has a program with um, the resettlement agency to help that employment training. Okay. So all refugees that come into Oregon actually go through ERCO um, for their training in English and pre-employment skills. Um, for our other locations, it's really just word of mouth within the communities that people find us. Okay. Wow. And we had a, a few, uh, just a few pictures, I think. Okay. Um, and we should probably take a look at those. Um, but yeah, this it sounds like an overwhelming job to be able to, to handle all <laughs> that. But it sounds like you're doing a good job. Okay, what are we looking at here? Um, these are Tongan clients. She's in our um, energy assistance, um, rental assistance program. And she and her daughter are holding up a certificate that she earned um, job readiness. Oh, great. Class that she completed. She looks proud. Yes. <laughs> as well she should be. Um, so these are the uh, classes for the most recent arrivals, the refugees, um, learning computer skills, English language classes at our main ERCO location. Wow. Okay. This is in southeast Portland. Um, northeast, northeast Portland, Portland, right off Gleason, okay. 103rd. Okay. 
Um, this is our uh, civic uh, diversity and civic leadership program. It's funded through the city of Portland. Um, they're there in City Hall, and oh, they've okay. just completed their, their training, and they all have their certificates. Uh, these are um, clients from uh, Bhutan uh, of Nepali culture, okay. and um, they're attending the, the English language classes. Okay. And there's a rather large community yes. from, from that area. So. Yes. Those are the most recent oh, uh, arrivals. Are these are adorable. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. <laughs> these two are in our early childhood parenting uh, programs. Really cute. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Mr. Sockum Touch. He's the executive director of Oh, Earth. great. He's one of the heads of the whole thing. Huh? Yes. <laughs> Big job. Big job. So, so Connie, um, what brought you to start volunteering at ERCO? Um, I actually was um, employed as a health educator and research assistant on the Vietnamese Women's Health Project. Mm -hmm. And so that was back in fall 2007. And so I did that for a year. And then I had to do this thing called my PhD program, and so it kind of... <laughs> um, you're, a, you're a doctor now, you're a doctorate. You're, I, you're a doctor. I am, and, but I, this is a part about that I love about our Asian Family Center is that because I just continue to stay connected, I would continue to be on the email list of, Connie, you were needing some assistance with um, recruitment outreach efforts, and you're really good at those craft things, <laughs> and so I was like, oh, Yes, I you know yes. I could come and help with that, okay. and so there'd be like different opportunities, and then um, and it's again it's that word of mouth, and so from one program coordinator in one program, um, like whether it was the um, the hepatitis B vaccination clinics, or if it's um, helping with uh, outreach efforts for the Women's Women's Health Project, um, and that one had to do with. Um, it was a qualitative research um, about pap smear, screening mm -hmm. beliefs, um, and there's others that with Providence Cancer Center, and so then the word of mouth from program coordinators. So I just my name started to just yeah. continue to be mm -hmm. on the email when you're description good, with them. They'll you know, never leave. <laughs> They'll never get rid of you. And, and I would be so honored to like to know that I can bring my skill set to help. Sure. And so for volunteering wise and continuing with that in kind contribution, there's a self rewarding, and so okay. that's something that I love to do. Okay. And um, it's true, isn't it? People get you get more out of volunteering. You ever feel like you give you know you, you, you mm -hmm. go to help other people but you end up really helping yourself too and the other thing is that with staff they will donate their own time on top of the regular FTE uh -huh. so I would actually see them like oh my gosh so they're providing their own in-kind contribution um, to make sure that the program mission and values are being met right. as well as the aims of the project and that to me spoke so much to me personally mm -hmm. and so it makes it easy for me to want to continue um, to volunteer that's so that's good role good, modeling. Good. Yes it is. <laughs> Tell me about this event that's coming up. So we are celebrating um, Asian Family Center programming, as well as celebrating the diverse Asian and Pacific Islander communities. Um, May is API Heritage Month, and okay. so we are having the a fundraiser on May 10th okay. at the Governor Hotel in downtown Portland. Nice. And so um, we can't say prices on the air, but if, okay. are, if, you are, if you're interested yeah. in getting information, sure. go to your website, yes. and we'll have a, um, some information on our screen there, sure. too. But this is open to anyone? Yes. Okay, you don't have to be an islander. You don't have to no, be No, 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 no. We would like everyone to come but and learn more about it. This is a fundraiser. It is a fundraiser. And awareness. Yes. Yeah, it's trying to build awareness. Yes. Great. So, and what can people expect at this event? Um, they can expect to hear Portland Mayor um, Charlie Hales. He'll be speaking at the event, and we'll have several cultural performances. We have lion dance. Oh, um, fun. A Polynesian dance group. That's lion, not lion. <laughs> That's right, lion. <laughs> a lot of symbols and a lot of noise. Uh, um, fun. We'll have dances from the Hmong American community, okay, from the Bhutanese Nepali community, uh -huh. as well as Pacific Islander dances. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, that's so great to celebrate yeah. the different heritages yes. that we have that are represented here. Mm -hmm. Before we run out of time, because we're just about out, is there anything else you'd like to say about ERCO and the services or the, the Asian Cent Family Center? Anything we should know? We do a lot of work and we really um, hope that people will continue to support us. 
And, and you and do take donations, do. I assume, yes. and probably need volunteers always. Yes. Always need volunteers. So especially someone maybe who has is has language skills in another language other mm -hmm. than English is mm -hmm. probably especially yeah. needed. Yeah. Okay. Check out our website. We have a lot of information. It's been newly redesigned. Good. So we have a lot of information Good. on there. Good. Wonderful. Thank you both for being on here. I appreciate it. If you're interested in finding out more about ERCO or if you're a new, um, new arrival to this country and need some help, that's the place to go. So go ahead and check out their website and um, don't go away. We'll be right back with more from Community Hotline. Volunteers are the cornerstone of local communities, and they enjoy the satisfaction that comes from being part of something larger than themselves. Multnomah County invites citizens to participate in projects that benefit the greater good of our residents. Want to help homeless animals? There are countless volunteer opportunities with Multnomah County Animal Services. There's always a lot to do when caring for almost 10,000 animals a year. Our shelter is at the forefront of animal care with some of the most progressive programs in the nation, and we depend on volunteers to keep those programs running. From showing cats to potential owners, to training dogs in the shelter, to fostering a shelter pet in your home, you can help your community by volunteering your time and talents with animal services. To find out more about this volunteer opportunity, visit their website. To explore other volunteer opportunities, contact the Office of Citizen Involvement. Shape your community. Volunteer. KZME Radio is a new station that is committed to entertain, inspire, and connect our community through programming that celebrates local music, arts, and culture. It was created to put local music and local arts on local radio, and it is a vehicle for our creative community to gain exposure while also celebrating what the Portland metro area has to offer. Hey folks, I'm Mike Midlow from the band Pancake Breakfast. What's so cool about KZME? Well, it's local music. You know, you can't go to every live show. Believe me, I've tried. So you can tune into KZME and hear a bunch of music that you might not get to see otherwise. Why should you support KZME? Well, it's pretty obvious. I mean, if you like Portland Town, USA, homegrown music, independent radio, and if you believe in the powers of rock and roll, then contribute to KZME. It's music where you live. My favorite thing about community media is how people find their voice and tell their story. It's the message of, by, and for a community. We're a gathering place because it gets people of all sorts of different backgrounds underneath one roof. It's art. It's technology. A snapshot of our community. Going live in three, two, one. The League of Women Voters makes history. Our country would not be the same without their dedication. Formed by women who organize to win women the right to vote. It is now a co-ed organization. Studying, informing, and acting. Nonpartisan. Grassroots. Influential. Taking political stance on many issues. The League of Women Voters encourages all citizens to be informed and active in government. Join, Join the, the League of Women, Women Voters, Voters of East Multnomah County, County in, in making history, history today. today.
Hi, welcome back to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel. We're here at Metro East at, in Gresham, and tonight we're going to be talking with my sister's house. I have with me Becky Coleman, who is the director of my sister's house. You've been on here before. It's okay. good to have you back, Becky. <laughs> Thank you. And with us this time, we also have Amber Seip, who is a child care, uh, child care provider and art therapist at my sister's house. Thanks for being here, Amber. And if I remember correctly, there's some sort of relationship. Oh, yes, yeah. Amber is my granddaughter. <laughs> that's great, that's great. Bring them in young yes. and get them yes. working. That's, that's right, great. that's, that's right. great. Yes. Well, yes. Becky, um, my sister's house is, is kind of an institution here in Gresham. You have mm -hmm. um, done a lot of wonderful work with women and, and uh, who need help in this community. Why don't you tell our Thank viewers you. a little bit about, about what services you provide and, and what your mission statement is. Okay, well, our, our mission is to be the stepping stone for women to create a new life for themselves. No small task. No. <laughs> <laughs> and so along with that, then we help women who uh, have either suffered abuse or domestic violence, had that in their history, and we give them an opportunity to recover from it, mm -hmm. to uh, reconnect with God, reconnect with themselves, and uh, uh, to um, educate themselves for a career, uh, get uh, some job opportunities, and uh, help with parenting mm -hmm. and uh, Bible and are, studies. And are the kids there also with their parents? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. And how, how much room do you have there? How many um, women can live there? How many families can live at? my sister's house. Well, they're living there. Correct? Yes, yes, they're yes, living yeah. there and so do I okay. and so does Amber. Okay. Um, we have, <laughs> we each have our own room um, and so do the families. Um, our license says through the city that we can house up to 15 okay. people and that includes the children. Okay. And we have an average of 12 at any one time. All right. So when people come there, are they referred to you? How, how do people find out about my sister's house? All kinds of ways. Uh, through churches, referrals, and uh, just word of mouth. Okay, good. And how long have you been around? How long? Nine years this summer. Nine years. Isn't oh, that wow, amazing? that's great. Yes. And you started this yourself, right? Yes. Is that, and how, uh, why, did you, why did you start my well, sister's Well, God house? gave me a vision. You know, I was raised with three brothers and I never had a sister. Uh, and uh, I've experienced a lot of the things that the women have gone through. Mm. You know, I've suffered so domestic there. violence and there wasn't any place for me to go. Uh, and I was raising two small children and uh, so. It so, was it was time, you know. God gave me the vision, and I thought, okay, I'm just going to you know, go run with, with it, it, do something yeah. with uh -huh. it, and, and make life better for other women. Yes, good for you. Yes. Good for you. Mm -hmm. So, when women come to you, what what are what are their biggest needs? I mean, obviously, if they're coming from a domestic violence situation, the first thing is probably just some space. Yes, you know, safe space. Safe space, and to feel secure, to feel welcomed and loved, right. to feel accepted, and to be given an opportunity to relax. Right. to uh, get into a routine. Instead of walking on eggshells yes, all the time. Yes, because who's going to come over the yeah, yeah. corner or whatever. Yeah. And uh, yeah, to just get into routine, relax. And women stay there up to a year. So during the first month or so, at least, they need that time to right. just settle in and uh, um, get their bearings. <laughs> yeah, and their kids as well, you know, right, become right. comfortable. And then they can get into uh, uh, job search, uh, are they going to further their education? Right. Where are they going to go? Where are they going to get the financing? You know, that type of right, thing. Right, so. right. <laughs> now, Amber, you've been working with the kids there. Oh. How many kids are there right now that you are um, helping to take care of? Currently, there's one little girl that I've been working with, well, for a few months now. Um, but there are also uh, one family with a little girl and a little boy, two and four. Mm. And um, there's also a pair of twins oh, that are going to be a year in a month oh, in Ma May. Young ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they adore me. So <laughs> I love them. I love them. Yeah. Um, That's great. And, yeah. Yeah. And as soon as the newest comes in, then we're gonna have a baby. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, a newborn. So. A newborn baby. That's <laughs> yeah. that's exciting. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of work. So yeah. when do you provide child care? Is it when mom has to go out for appointments or interviews um, or what? I provide it primarily um, for one of the women when she's going to school. Oh, cool. uh, she has been going to school at the, long, at the amount of time that she's been here at the house. The mm -hmm. last two terms I've been babysitting her daughter um, in the morning generally. Mm -hmm. 
uh, sometimes it can get very long. Yes. <laughs> but it, it's like practice for being a mom, and that's oh, a lot of work. It's it the is most thankless, exhausting job, yeah. but it's also the most rewarding. You yes. Know? Yes. But, yeah. Well, and without that uh, service, mm -hmm. you know, these women wouldn't be able to go to school. Well, no, they couldn't go to school, mm -hmm. or if they want to go to a job interview, right. or they have a doctor appointment, right. or, or they, whatever. They couldn't do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's great that you're mm -hmm. able to provide. Just that. yesterday, um, that mother. Um, had a job interview that I had Good to her. watch her longer than usual. Yeah. And in a case like that, it's like, yes, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy <laughs> yes. To do that. Like, yes. Good yeah. luck. I mean, that's, you know, that's very difficult. Yes. You know? And I, I imagine a lot of the difficulty would be in helping to rebuild the self-esteem and confidence. Yes, that's true, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you help people do that? Well, the first thing we do is we have a little, board, uh, little sign that's on their door that tells them that they're, uh, they're special and that they're unique and that they have gifts and a plan that God has for their life. And then I, I reaffirm that with uh, other little quips that I, yeah. I stick all over their door. So it's and it's then, in their face all the time. Mm -hmm. Eventually you think it'll stick yeah, around. Well, hopefully. you know, and repetition. Right, that's right, how we those learn. affirmations. Mm -hmm. and, yes. and, mm -hmm. and encouragement, they need it all the time because you can tell when a woman comes in if she really believes those things about yeah, herself. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of them come in very downtrodden mm -hmm. and, and beat down and you know not right. just physically but uh -huh. emotionally emotionally yeah. they feel yeah. vulnerable they've been yeah. injured and right. you know they want is somebody to love them to yeah. wholeness yeah. yeah yeah so um amber i understand you also do some art therapy tell yes. me about that um i have done projects with the kids and with the women um, the kids, I, I remember doing a rather big project when we had a bunch of little boys in the house. So <laughs> I had taken them outside and taken this big, big canvas, probably bigger than this table, and we had done a splatter paint all over oh, it. Oh, like little we, boys would love oh, splatter paint. They, they enjoyed it <laughs> in, entirely. Oh, but, um, <laughs> or with the women, I've done these this thing called altered books, hmm. which um, is a technique that basically you take an old book, mm -hmm. maybe you've read it, maybe it has meaning to you, but like, bear with me, you rip out some <laughs> of the pages, but you, whether you paint it, whether you put poems into it, whether you make it into a complete and total art project, you make it your own. Oh. And, and it, something for them to keep that. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, it can also, it, it's a form of maybe scrapbooking. Uh -huh. You can put pictures into it, stickers, little oh. things that, maybe little drawings that their kids have drawn for them. Oh. Just, it's, it's one way to be unique and to build on yourself and your family. I like that, <laughs> I like that. So you had a lot of experience doing this? Or, oh. or now you have probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been through therapy myself for some of the same reasons that these women come into. Okay. And just as my grandma have, we both have experience in these types of things. I think that empathy probably helps a lot. Yes, it does. Yeah. It really does. I enjoy helping the women come into themselves mm -hmm. and learn that they are special women okay. and they deserve to be loved. Good. Good for you. Now, how how do you, how are you supported at my sister's house? Donations. So it's it's really supported by the community. <laughs> yes, it's yeah. supported by the community. We have a lot of service clubs that support oh, us. A lot of churches that support us. Good. Our biggest supporter, of course, is Trinity Lutheran, mm -hmm. who's uh, uh, who owns a property that we operate from. Okay. And uh, but there's other churches in the community that support us as well, and then a number of foundations that Good. continue to support us. So you can always use donations. Oh yes. <laughs> and besides just uh, monetary donations, which of course are probably always everyone's preference, <laughs> because then you can spend the money how you need right, it. Right. What other right. things can people supply that might help my sister's house? Uh, things for the women to use and the kids. What what kinds of things? Well, toilet paper is nice. <laughs> I bet you go through a lot of toilet paper. <laughs> toilet paper, paper towels. You know, anything that runs a home. Right, I right. mean, cleaning supplies, okay. pine saw, yeah. uh, Comet, you know, even shampoo, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Any conditioner. Any personal things mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. are, are Toothbrush, needed. toothpaste, yeah. you know, combs, okay. brushes. Good. Yeah. So, you know, people have deodorant. a little extra. Deodorant. <laughs> Please, send the deodorant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if there's little things that people have that, you know, they are, they have a little, a little extra money, $5 yeah. at the end of the week, you know. Mm -hmm. 
send it over or, or sure. pick up a few things and yeah. drop them off. Yeah. You um, also have a fundraiser coming up. Yes, we do. We have a plant sale. It's the day before Mother's Day. Ah, and good this timing. Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the eighth year that we've held it, and Wonderful. it's at the corner of uh, Eastman and Powell, which is oh. Trinity Lutheran's that's parking lot, bless okay. their hearts, letting us use it. That's a good location, too, because that's an easy one for everybody mm -hmm. to find. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of local nurseries have donated uh, um, plants. Great. We'll have hanging baskets. Mm, and fuchsias so, and things. Uh -huh, mm. Lots of things. Lots of things. So uh, the money from this is going to go to support my sister's house. Yes, 100% of it comes to that's the house. Great. That's yeah. great. That's yeah. great. So that is May 11th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., uh -huh. day for Mother's Day. So perfect time for people yes. that have their mothers. They want to give them a special yes. plant. Yes. And then if it's not a hanging basket, it's a plant, ask them if you, they want you to plant it for them. Oh, that's an idea. Well, <laughs> because, because we will have little uh, planters that we yeah. could do that on yeah. site. Oh, okay. And there's also vegetables, you know, for your garden. you know, some moms <laughs> don't have the time or the energy to go out and plant them well, themselves. That's true. You know, it's like, yes. okay, you know, yeah. so, here you go. Can you know, I kind of plant that for you too? <laughs> Tell me where you want it. That's and a good idea. I just, you know, remember <laughs> sometimes yeah. getting plants and thinking, oh, these are great, but I gotta get out there and plant them. <laughs> so, yeah, wonderful. Uh -huh. So, um, and that will be all, all different kinds of plants. And all different kinds of plants. Hanging plants, baskets, Hanging and you can baskets, have them actually. bulbs can, even. Oh, okay. You know, and some uh, uh, of our donors will bring in plants that they've separated in their yard. Uh -huh. So there will be like um, dahlias oh, and okay. irises. And can somebody bring, a, bring a, their own planter in and, and buy a plant? and? Oh, and, sure. Uh, and bring everything in and uh -huh. just have you help them uh -huh. plant it? Yes, because we'll have uh, some soiled air yeah. and a table. We good, can do that. good. Mm -hmm. That'll be fun. Yeah. I hope the weather's good. Is it, you have a I covered hope so area? Too. Is it all <laughs> in the open? <laughs> no, it, 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 it's both. It's both? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if it's really pouring, you'll be okay. Yeah. But you'll yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what but other, it's lots of fun. What yes. other kinds of things do you do? Do you, ha you have other little fundraisers from time to time? I know well, we go to uh, Burgerville. Uh -huh. uh, they work with the community and, and to mm -hmm. support a lot of organizations. And so we have an evening there, like for a meal. And I believe it's 10 or 20% that goes toward the house. Uh, we've also done the same thing with um, uh, the Roadhouse. Oh, right down there on, uh -huh. the on um, Burnside. No, Burnside. Burnside. Burnside, yeah. And then uh, not too long ago, we had one at Papa's uh, Pizza. Oh, good. And that was really fun. Good. It's a great turnout. So people should just, um, they could check out your Facebook page. Yes, we have a Facebook. My, my sister's house, I was going to say, what is it? But anyway. Uh, <laughs> it's on Facebook. <laughs> yes. And, you know I, <laughs> and I post on there all the time. It's like, you know, I use it as my blog. Yeah, good, yeah. good, yeah. You do yeah. little I have, invites I've, and I've, things I've, like I that. I follow that, and, yeah. and, I, and I'm sure uh, yeah. Amber here helps you out. With yes, this. Amber oh, helps me, and Amber's super techie, I'm not. I always have to call my daughter and say, how do I do this? Yeah, I know. She just posted this, how do I get it off of there? I just messed up. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what daughters and grandchildren are yeah. for, right? Yeah, <laughs> Helping us right. navigate yes. the technical world yes. today. Yeah. Well, is there anything yeah. else you want to leave us with before we, before we hit close um, this segment of Community Hotline? Anything well, we should know about? My yeah, house. Just, to, just to come out and support us. You know, these women need a second opportunity at their lives, and, and uh, it's important for them to know that the community uh, supports that. they that. care. Yeah, yeah, and that they, they care. care. Good. Yeah. And thank you, both of you, for giving of yourselves and your lives to help these women. That's a special thing. <laughs> So thanks for being here tonight, and thanks for watching this segment of Community Hotline. My Sister's House is a great organization. They do need your help, so be sure to go out to the plant sale on May 11th, and uh, if you need more information, check out the Facebook page, and you can check it, you know, get all everything you need to know over there, yes. right? Yes, yes. And please don't go away. We'll be right back with more of Community Hotline. Hi, I'm Luke Perry. You're watching Metro East. Over 25 years of great community media.
Alone, our reach is limited. No matter how great our intentions, on our own, we can only stretch so far. But at Rotary, we believe the right group of people working together can make our communities, our world, a better place. Rotary, humanity in motion. ¿Están listos? Free GED classes. Are you ready? Classes gratis de inglés. Yo estoy lista. Transportation for free. I'm ready. Clases gratis de computación. ¡Qué listos! We're, We're ready. Come to listos. If you can do it, you can do it. What am I supposed to do with all these corks? Turn them into a cork board. What about all these floppy disks? How about a fantastic journal? Hmm, I wouldn't learn how to make cool things like that. Well, come on down to Scrap. Scrap has monthly workshops where you too can learn how to make great things. We provide everything you need. For more information, call 503-294-0769 or go to www.scrapaction.org. Scrap, create more, consume less. Being a star was my guardian angel when my life was in shambles. They helped me find counseling and shelter. Being a star is great. They helped us pay our utility bills. And find health resources. I'm in college now because being a star helped me find scholarships so I could put myself through school. Call 503-823-4000 to find out if being a star can help you. Gracias, being a star. What local community media is to us is literally our lifeline to what's going on in the lives around us. The absolute most important thing that happens in your neighborhood. People's local communities are usually what's most important to them. Because we're the faces, the smiles, the peoples, and the personalities of the community. To not only give people a voice, but to have their voice heard. Hi, and welcome back to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. Thanks for sticking with us. I know you didn't want to miss this last segment, which is Elders in Action. With me representing Elders in Action is Liz Graves, who is a volunteer. Thanks for being here, Liz. Thank you. And Leslie Foran, the Executive Director. Thanks Hi. for being here. Thanks for having us. Yes, I'm delighted to see you in your bright springy colors. <laughs> yes. I like that. <laughs> it's a beautiful day today. So. Thanks for joining me. Yes. And Elders in Action is sort of everywhere in the news lately. Every time I, I you know, I'm on your email list and I'm always reading about stuff in the paper. You're really active, active in the community. Tell, tell our viewers a little bit about, um, for those who may be living under a rock and aren't familiar <laughs> with Elders in Action, what exactly your mission is in the community? Sure, we've been around since 1968 and so that's wonderful to hear that you, we have a presence you in do. the community. You do, certainly. Um, our mission is to assure a vibrant community through the active involvement of older adults. And so we work really hard to make our community friendly for all ages and make sure that older adults are engaged in civic engagement through volunteer work, through schools, through their community. And then we also want to help older adults if they need help navigating systems. So we have four main program areas that we help make our community what we call age friendly okay. for all ages. And our first program is our personal advocate program, which is really one-on-one -on -one advocacy that works directly with older adults. Volunteers work with elders who need help navigating. And then we also have our speakers bureau, which we go out and we have volunteers speak to community groups that might need um, information about how to volunteer or want information about how to use our services or want to learn how to better serve the older customer or older okay. adults. Okay. And then we have our commission, which Liz is a part of, which advises our city and county um, mm -hmm. elected officials on issues that affect older adults. 
And then our last program is our age-friendly business program, which Liz is also involved in. <laughs> and that's really working with our business community partners and helping to educate their staff on customer service, mm -hmm. um, hearing loss, vision loss that some older adults may be encountering, and how they can better serve them as a consumer and as a business. That's great, that's great. So Liz, you know, as you know, our, our population is aging and, and mm -hmm. there's a lot more of us boomers that are moving up into the senior segment. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I've, I'm familiar with the business program, you know, helping businesses be right. uh, more friendly to the, to, to the older uh, population. You have, a, um, you have people that go out and actually analyze um, businesses. That's, that's one of the things I do, yeah, and it's just invaluable to do it. And I mean, and the clients love it. Yeah, you're kind of like that secret shopper. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah. Oh, check, check, check. Yes, no, no. yes, yes. Or the ones that check the restaurants to, for their cleanliness <laughs> yeah. rating. Yeah. And it's really great. I actually had a knee problem last year and had knee surgery, so I was really looking for elder friendly places uh -huh. when I was, yeah. you know, yeah. because I was like, okay, do they have a chair? How's the light? How's the signage? And you know, business real businesses love it. Oh, sure. It really helps them. They'll say, "Oh, I didn't realize that you can't see where the bathrooms are very well." Right. You know, and so it's a fantastic program. Well, unless it's a business that has no older clientele that gears, you know, strictly working with teenagers or something, right. it would be foolish not to try to be prepared exactly. for, for the older segment. So, um, and, and, the, and working with the um, government and uh, what, is it, what, what kinds of things, is it lobbying that you do or what is it as far on as? On the commission? Yes. Um, we do some of that. A lot of it, I, I just love the, the commission because we delve into a lot of issues that, that every elder is facing. Mm -hmm. And one of the big ones we worked on last year was the Senior Property Tax Deferral Program. Mm. It was some legislation that was made and then some, some issues with that. And we just kind of gave those people who were involved a voice. Good, good. You're a great resource. Absolutely. So, um, Leslie, there's an aging, a healthy aging conference that's coming up for boomers. For boomers. Yeah, now yes. that, that's happening on May 18th, it looks like from 8 to 9. Right. Tell me a little bit about that. And that is, this is the second annual uh, conference that we're having that Elders in Action is co-hosting with a number of community partners. Um, some big local community partners like AARP will be there, Boomers Plus, Life by Design, some of our key partners who are also working with the boomer right. population. And it's going to be at the Oregon, uh, the Oriental College of Medicine down right. in Chinatown. And it's really an opportunity to come and get education, meet other like-minded folks to learn. And so it's all the topics that are being offered that day are about healthy aging. So we're having one session on um, technology in the home. There's some really cool things happening that people can do to put in, into place to age in their own home, age in place. Right. We'll have a session on, um, someone's coming from the farmer's market, on how to cook nutritious food for one or two. Good. Um, yeah. we're so all, needed. So needed, yeah. yeah. And we're having a session on um, music and the brain. And so someone who uh, works at the jazz festival and blues festival is coming to do a program about how important music is as we age and how our brain waves. Um, so it will be really That's pretty interesting. Amazing too. Yeah, There's some it really is. interesting research being done into all of that. Right, of exactly. So it's really about healthy aging. We have a couple other sessions that are happening that day. It's really geared towards um, being participating in your aging, embracing your aging, and taking the best care that you can. So this That's is great. really exciting. We did it last year. We had over 125 participants. Wow. So we moved to a bigger venue this yeah. year so we could have more, more. people come. Um, we have a great keynote speaker who talks about healthy aging in the brain and food in the brain. Um, so we're really excited to be a part of it again. It's a great group that's um, kind of on the planning committee, that's what I'm on, uh -huh. and it's always fun to kind of work and plan and then actually be there the day of. Right. And, yeah, and, and see how it actually yeah. all comes together. Exactly, so um, if anybody is interested, they can go to our website or our Facebook page and we have links there um, where they can always call our office right. and we can give them, it's an online registration, we do ask that people uh -huh. register. So people can go either who are getting older, I mean I know the older I get the you know, the less old, you know, 50, 60, 70 sounds. <laughs> That's not old, what are you talking no, about? No, it's not. <laughs> but um, so, 
people who are going for themselves could, but people who are maybe um, have older parents, parents. or, or, or mm -hmm. you know, Absolutely. older people in their family, family that they, family members that they would like to help mm -hmm. age better. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That would be for them too. Yep. Or maybe it's, people that are caregivers and that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. really geared towards it's the Healthy Aging Conference for Boomers, but it's certainly, yes, it's yeah. open to anyone who's yeah. interested in the topics. If there's right. students out there who are studying sure. gerontology, sure. Yeah. that's Which also... Which is a huge field now. Mm -hmm. It's very big. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. Okay. Now, you have a lot of stuff going on, and we I want to make sure <laughs> we have time to cover all of it. Um, May 23rd, The Secret to Living a Legacy for Future Generations. Tell yes. me about that. This is another event that Elders in Action is co-sponsoring um, with one of uh, a new organization in town called SAGE, and there it, that stands for the Senior Advocates for Generational Equity. And they're a new group in town. Is that a town. nonprofit? They're a nonprofit organization. Right. Sage. <laughs> right. Sage. Sage. Okay. Yes. And I can leave you a flyer. Okay. Um, and they are hosting, they're having um, the CEO and founder of Encore.org, Mark Friedman, come in and from San Francisco area. And he's very well known in Encore Careers. Mm. So finding second, that second, second careers career. Second careers or yeah. whatever, yeah. And finding that purpose work in your second stage right. of life. And so he's coming to Portland to promote his book, The Big Shift, which one of our yeah. staff members, Mark Noonan, is featured I in the Mark. book. Yeah. Oh, really? So, yeah, yes. so, oh, that's and, he, great. and it highlights Mark. our Mark's story about how he recareered from high tech and found his way into the work of gerontology and, oh. and volunteer work. And so it's a nice That's event great. to co-sponsor. And then Mark actually helped me when I Which came Mark? to volunteer. Mark, Mark Newton. Newton. <laughs> yeah, when I came for an interview to volunteer, I had been the HR manager for 25 years, lost my job, and he says, well, now it's time for your encore career to <laughs> yeah. do something that you Isn't want. That and so I have a whole new career plus the volunteering, and mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, it's right. kind of what Life by Design Northwest yep. does. And well, they're a partner, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, so, yeah, I mean, it's such a great um, idea and such a, a switch in mindset mm -hmm. from the idea of you work this long, you retire, and then you vegetate, you know? Yes, right. Or you play golf yeah. for you play the rest golf, of your life. Or, yeah. You know, it's, it's not that way anymore because people aren't ready to necessarily yeah, right. retire. Or if you're going to retire, maybe early and then move on to the second right. phase. Right. You know? And give back. And give yes. back, yes. A lot There's a lot of. Really um, lot. Like people are, are taking a, I can what they call them the vacations where you're actually volunteering. Yeah, right. You know, and, Absolutely. And, or, or or doing a work vacation, you know, going somewhere and, and learning about a culture yet giving back to that community. And, right. Yeah, it's and great. so we really we have seen that the boomers mm -hmm. are demanding right. a different yeah. a different retirement. Right. <laughs> so um, so this event will be Mark Friedman will be there and he'll be talking about his book, talking about encore careering. Um, Elders in Action is co-sponsoring that, and that's on May 23rd at the Oregon Historical Society, so right. it's downtown. And again... Um, 6.30 to 8 p.m. Yeah, yes. exactly, okay. and we can get information on our website. They do want people to RSVP, and that event is free, right. and it is open to the public. And yeah. again, it should be a great evening, really just having... Um, the leader coming and talking about uh -huh. Encore Careers. That's so. wonderful. Yeah, get, get the expert in there. Yes. And finally, you have uh, something here about Portland Sunday Parkways, which right. I know I was talking to you earlier. I, I work on Sundays, and so I, I usually don't get to participate in that, except that I come out in the morning sometimes <laughs> on, on the day when it's in my neighborhood. It's like, all these people are pushing mm -hmm. strollers and biking and walking. It's like, oh, this is so, so great. Fun, yes. isn't it so great? tell me about Sunday yes. Parkways. So Sunday Parkways is an event that uh, the Bureau of Transportation puts on in um, the city of Portland and in East County and they have this year I think they're going to have five events and so Elders wow. in Action is partnering with AARP Oregon mm -hmm. just to have a presence of older adults in healthy aging and active aging and so as we know there's a lot of people who like to walk and bike and get mm -hmm. out there so we have a variety of programs. The first event actually is in um, May out here in East County is the first Sunday Parkways and they right. go all through the, the summer and so we're looking for folks to help with they call them intersection superheroes and so, <laughs> so keeping the intersection <laughs> safe for people right, crossing exactly. and that kind of thing. people yeah. to get safe to get engaged really to just to show that um, active aging and it's we're all around older adults yeah. we're all aging and right. so this is a great partnership <laughs> mm -hmm. for us you want to be do. here it's inevitable you're going to do it <laughs> that's exactly. right <laughs> and it's really promoting health and getting yeah. people active and, and, and participating in their own wellness so the, in East County, it's May 12th. I believe so, right. And then, um, and then just you can go to the, the 
uh, Sunday Parkway, so they have the, uh, a website. Right, and with the maps, it. and they're all in different geographic kind of right. locations throughout right. the city. But it is a fun, a fun event. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's one of those things that's great for the family. Get oh, grandma and grandpa yeah, out there, absolutely. mom and dad, the exactly. grand, grand your dog. Everybody. Yeah, yes, your dog. Yeah, yeah. A, lot of, exactly. a lot of animals out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fun. So, um, Liz, you've been a volunteer there for how long at Elders in Action? About two years. About two years. Mm -hmm. So, what's the best part of it for you? The best part for me would be I, I really, really love to do the age-friendly evaluations. Yeah. yeah. I, that's really so nice. Well, it's a great thing. And when, when somebody, when a business goes through that, you're talking about for the businesses, mm -hmm. correct? Right. They, they get a, like a, a little plaque or a right. sticker to put in the window mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. saying that Absolutely. they are, they have and then, passed. <laughs> yes. Right. And then Elders in Action publishes a guide every year that has all the businesses that are mm. elder-friendly. Right. And it's so, I mean, people love it. They, we've kind of forgotten that that maybe some seniors can't see well, mm -hmm. and so you have mm -hmm. to make sure the print is correct, and there's so many things to it. Things you never think about and until you get there yourself and go, oh. Right. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Ooh, I get exactly. it now. <laughs> and that's what's good about the, the certification. And the commission, I love the commission. I love it so much because we really advocate for seniors, and I'm, I'm a real go-getter to try to get people more well aware of elder abuse mm -hmm. and so that's mm -hmm. another thing that and also the personal advocates mm -hmm. get calls from people and the about personal that. advocates who needs a personal advocate who would who is a who is a typical person who would use a personal advocate well we don't have any requirements you don't have to be low income you don't have to be the only requirement that we have is that you're over the age of 60 but it can be anybody who's really having trouble navigating okay. a problem and in so it any can, kind of problem in really any right. kind of problem really so it can be anything from you're having a consumer you know fraud issue or you've having maybe a more serious elder abuse issue um, or maybe you're just needing help kind of brainstorming and linking to resources that you might be right. in need of. Because there's so many resources there here, are. but people don't know about they them. They don't. Right. They don't. It's hard to, sometimes it's hard to figure out where to begin. Right. right. And living in East mm -hmm. County, mm -hmm. like I live in Troutdale, and it just mm -hmm. I just know there's just a lot of programs that, that people out are not aware of, That's where they right. might mm -hmm. be if they live downtown Portland. So if they if they are... 60 or over, they can call Elders oh, in Action. You can, mm -hmm. if, you can either help them or you can refer them to the right, right. place. Exactly. Good. Right, exactly. Good. Anything else you want to leave us with before we close for the night? Well, we're always looking for more volunteers. Mm. Anybody who's interested in volunteering, not only just with Elders <coughs> in Action, but there's a lot of great organizations in town that are always looking for the talent and wisdom of older adults. And so if we can help link people to getting engaged, that's part of fulfilling our mission of um, assuring a vibrant community. Right, right, because there is life after <laughs> yes. 55, 60, everything else. Yes, and sometimes it's, it's, sometimes it's even better. Yes, yeah. I think so. <laughs> I, I know so. <laughs> okay. Good, good. Thank you, Liz and Leslie, so much for, for being here tonight. And thanks for watching uh, Community Hotline tonight. I hope you've learned something from Elders in Action, the awesome uh, things that they have to offer, the, the elders, the senior community here, and for everybody else. So, you know, we're all going to get there. So check them out on their website. You can check out their Healthy Aging Conference for Boomers, The Secret to Living a Legacy for Future Generations, Mark Friedman, on um, May 23rd, and check out Portland Sunday Parkways. I'm Monica Weitzel. Thanks for watching Community Hotline tonight. I hope I see you next week.
being a star was my guardian angel when my life was in shambles. They helped me find counseling and shelter. Being a star is great. They helped us pay our utility bills. And find health resources. I'm in college now because being a star helped me find scholarships so I could put myself through school. Call 503-823-4000 to find out if Vienna Star can help you. Gracias, Vienna Star. What local community media is to us is literally our lifeline to what's going on in the lives around us. The absolute most important thing that happens in your neighborhood. People's local communities are usually what's most important to them. Because we're the faces, the smiles, the peoples, and the personalities of the community. To not only give people a voice, but to have their voice heard. Volunteers are the cornerstone of local communities, and they enjoy the satisfaction that comes from being part of something larger than themselves. Multnomah County invites citizens to participate in projects that benefit the greater good of our residents. Help provide services to thousands of your neighbors. Sound impossible? 1,700 members of your community are already doing this, and so much more, by volunteering with Multnomah County Library. Library volunteers help their neighbors by teaching computer skills, shelving materials, and promoting literacy in the community. The library provides a wide array of services, including lending popular books and DVDs, computer access, and life-enriching activities. Give a neighbor a helping hand and spend a couple hours a week at the library, making your community a better place. To find out more about this volunteer opportunity, visit their website. To explore other volunteer opportunities, contact the Office of Citizen Involvement. Shape your community. KZME Radio is a new station that is committed to entertain, inspire, and connect our community through programming that celebrates local music, arts, and culture. It was created to put local music and local arts on local radio, and it is a vehicle for our creative community to gain exposure while also celebrating what the Portland metro area has to offer. Hi, I'm Allie Wesley, and I love KZME because it's a great resource to find out about awesome music in our community. They have hip hop and uh, pop and chamber folk and pretty acoustic music, and they have everything that we have in Northwest. You should support KZME to support these local artists and the awesome music that you can find. For more information on how to support and get involved with 1071 FM KZME Radio, see our website.